the proof is relatively straightforward. Recall that sigma star is the union of the strings of size 0 with those of size 1, with those of size 2, etc. And our overall strategy will be just to assign the first numbers to sigma 0, and the next to sigma 1, the next to sigma 2, etc. More formally, we can define n sub k to be the total number of strings of size at most k, and then use this to create the correspondence. Thus, nk will be the last number assigned to a string of length k. So in this way, 1 will get assigned to the empty string, the only element of sigma 0. And then the next numbers, n0 plus 1 through n sub 1, that'll get assigned to all the strings of length 1. And in general, n sub k minus 1 plus 1 through n sub k, those set of numbers will get assigned to sigma k, the strings of length k. Within each one of these arrows, you can do the correspondence in any way. Lexicographical order is as good as any. For example, we can enumerate all the strings over the binary alphabet like this. First, we assign 1 to the empty string. Then we enumerate all strings of length 1. Then those of length 2, and so forth. This is the main theorem that we will need here concerning countability. But while we're on the subject, we'll say a few words about countability in general as a kind of bonus. The same argument here shows that a countable union of finite sets is countable. Suppose that our collection of sets is S0, S1, etc. And without loss of generality, we'll suppose that they are disjoint. If they happen not to be disjoint, we can always make them so by just subtracting out from SK all the elements it shares with the sets S0 through SK minus 1. Then the argument proceeds just as before. We assign the first numbers to S0, the next to S1, etc. Now it turns out that we can actually prove something even stronger than the original statement here. We can replace the word finite with the word countable and say that a countable union of countable sets is countable. Notice that our current proof doesn't work. If we tried to count all the elements of S0 before any elements of S1, we might never get to the elements of S1 because S0 could be infinite. Nevertheless, this theorem is true. For convenience of notation, we'll let the elements of SK be XK0, XK1, etc. And then we can make each SK a row in a grid as shown here. Again, we can't go row by row here because we might never finish the first row if S0 is infinite. On the other hand, we can go diagonal by diagonal since each diagonal is finite. The union of all the SK is the union of all the rows, but it's also the same thing as the union of all the diagonals. Each diagonal being finite, we can apply the original version of this theorem to prove that a countable union of countable sets is countable. You can also just translate the indices here on X into an enumeration as well. Note that this same idea proves that the rationals are countable. Imagine putting all the fractions with a 1 in the denominator in the first row, all those with a 2 in the denominator in the second row, all those with 3 in the denominator in the third row, and so on and so forth.